Hi, my name's Nikki Khan and I've been a midwife for about 20 years now and my job today is to tell you a little bit about settling your baby at night. Now, as you can see, Suki is sound asleep but I've left her on cover just so I can talk you through a little bit. Now, there's a few things you should remember when you're settling your baby, mainly the temperature of the room that she's going to sleep in. You can keep the temperature of the room ideally at around 18 and a half degrees centigrade, which is about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And a thermometer like this, a room thermometer, will help to monitor this. You can buy these in most um, high street stores and there are varying prices, but ultimately you just need to keep an eye on what the temperature of the room is. It's recommended as well that for the first six months of your baby's life that your baby sleeps in the same room with you, so exactly as this setup is for safety reasons and it means that you can be monitor how she is at night. The other thing you need to consider is the bedding that your little one has. It should be lightweight blankets and always remember that if you double up on a blanket that's like two blankets. The blanket itself should never go above the shoulders. It should always be remain at this height so that your baby's head never has a risk of being covered. The reasoning of keeping your baby's feet to the bottom of the cot is so that she can't go under the blankets again, increasing the risk of smothering. When you're purchasing the cot, there's a few things you have to remember, mainly how long it's gonna last you for. Now, this little one is ideal for the baby this size, but she'll grow quite quick out of it. Um, and also, you need to consider the mattress you get, which should be quite a well-fitting and a firm mattress that's also waterproof for obvious reasons in case of little accidents. So once you're all set up like this, it's a good idea to have it all sorted before you actually come home with your baby and see how it fits in the room and where you're gonna put everything. One of the best things you should think about getting as well are blackout blinds. Now, this will help your baby differentiate between night and day, especially as the lighter evenings are coming during the summer. So they are quite an asset to have. Another thing that you might consider buying are uh, something like a mobile, a musical mobile that can help lull your little one to sleep and little teddies and coloured things in case she wakes up during the night. Four main points you need to remember with regards to reducing the incidence of cot death are overheating, feet of the baby to the foot of the bed, avoid smoking around your baby and keep your little one with her back when she, on the bed when she's sleeping. Other key factors you need to remember are do not share your bed with your baby when you're under any form of alcohol or medication or have taken alcohol. And also never fall asleep on the sofa or an armchair whilst your baby is in your arms. So finally, with all those hints about how to reduce the incidence of cot death, another little hint is to try and give the last feed of the day by the bed so the baby can help at an early stage to differentiate between day and night feeds and hopefully with all that you'll get a good night's sleep intermittently disturbed by feeding times but a good night's sleep